Okay, so uh, the time is now 5.47, so we're gonna start essentially right on time. Um, this is a fantastic turnout. Uh, before I introduce myself, I'm going to go over um, a few logistical considerations for the next two hours we have here together. Uh, then I'll introduce myself and we will go on down the line from there. So if everyone um, just wants to open up their materials packet, uh, we can do a quick overview of the agenda. Um, <clears throat> but before we get to that, I wanted to share that the restroom facilities, uh, should you need to use them at any time, feel free, just disappear, go uh, down this hall and to the right, across from the office is the child restroom, but it is functional for us big people too. Um, and if you could all remember to please silence your cell phones, myself included. Uh, we don't want any distractions. Um, and if you need to take a call, please just go out into the hallway. Um, there's couches out there. That way people, this room has pretty good sound buffering, but sometimes it can be hard to hear. And especially with all the materials on the table, um, we'll want to preserve our clarity of communication. Um, so a disclaimer is this is the very first time this workshop has ever been presented to my knowledge and it was presented on a very short time frame and we are looking forward to uh, workshopping this workshop with you while we go through the material together. So um, I am very much wanting to hear from you um, points for improvement, questions, midstream. I'm feeling very flexible and it won't offend me at all if you um, have questions and want to get your needs met sort of in the stream of our conversation. Um, and to that point, we don't have an actual evaluation form for the evening, but on the left side of your packet behind the Safe Routes to School door hangers is some note paper. Now, um, these folders were recycled from another project, so these headers on the nicely branded note paper mean nothing. Um, but if everyone could take out the community projects one in the back um, with the little clock tower and pavilion on it, we're gonna use this as our evaluation form for the night. And so at the very, very end, we'll have a couple short questions for you to respond to, but throughout the workshop, if you could write down your feedback on this form, we will be collecting these at the end of our session together. Does that make sense? Very much appreciate your help in, in giving feedback. Um, we do have a uh, video recording taking place in the back corner. Uh, this is Najee of the Spokane Regional Health District. Thank you, Najee, for recording uh, the proceedings tonight. There's a lot of parents and teachers and principals who wanted to make it tonight, but due to scheduling conflicts, weren't able to come, so we're gonna provide these resources electronically um, to them at a later time. So to that point, um, Kate and I have mics, and when you ask questions, we will make every effort to try to repeat the question back um, so that people on the other end of the line can benefit from your question. Chances are they are wondering similar things because we're all going through this uh, for the first time together. Are there any other uh, questions before we take a peek at the agenda and then get into introductions? No, people are ready to roll, let's do it. Okay, so um, we, after introductions, uh, I'm gonna cover a very brief background. Sometimes this can feel like preaching to the choir, but why are we working on Walk to School Day? Um, you know, what are the bigger societal trends taking place, health trends that this is part of an effort to combat? Um, the word obesity probably leaps into the forefront of your minds. That's one of the many issues that Walk to School Day can help um, address and alleviate. Um, then Kate is going to tell us more about how this movement has evolved um, how it's played out on the ground here in Spokane. And then we are going to uh, go through a little assessment exercise. Um, so some of you might already have an idea of where, how, what, how big of an event you wanna attempt to pull off at your school this year. Um, but if you don't, hopefully this assessment will help make you confident about determining small, medium, or large. And if you already know what the size of your event is gonna look like. I'm very curious to see if our assessment tool matches up with what you project you're ready for. Um, and if it doesn't, then I wanna learn how to fix my assessment tool. Because honestly, I just pulled it out of a hat last night. Um, <laughs> so after we assess the size of the events we're gonna be diving into this year, we're going to look at some um, planning tools. 
so event organizing checklists, and um, we're going to consider you know the basics, kind of the think of it like a menu, a menu of options. The you know you've got your entree, and then you've got your appetizers and drinks and dessert on top of that. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to um, I'm, we could get through some of these other sections quicker than what's listed on the agenda, um, but I really want to preserve the time for you to work in small groups to actually start formulating your thoughts based on those templates of what you want your event to look like this year. And some of you have multiple people from your school, some of you are a sole representative. And so um, Kate and I will be wandering around during that 30 minute workshop period to answer questions, um, provide feedback, just be a resource to you. Um, and some of you are sort of supra individuals, that meaning that you're not affiliated with any particular one school, but you can help in a variety of ways. And that would be John and Caitlin here, and anyone else not affiliated? Okay, Susan. Um, so we might ask you to pair up with someone who's here by themselves just to be a second perspective um, on their event planning brainstorm. Does that sound good? Um, excellent. So then we're going to hear from each group uh, what you came up with, kind of where you're at, because we're all in this together. This is meant to be kind of a cooperative learning environment, uh, sharing out and learning from each other's creativity and situations. Um, and then um, we're going to cover a few additional specific resources or logistics for this year's um, kind of coordinated series of events. So what the media plan is looking like for all of our events put together. And we're going to pass out some swag bags and um, have a closing and send you on your way for the evening. Um, does that sound good to everyone? Did we leave anything out? Does everyone, I, I think a lot of people are coming into this room not knowing what to expect from the workshop. So um, if there's anything you were hoping for that's not here, now's your time to let me know. Nope. All right. So actually, Kate, I'm going to have you introduce yourself first um, to break up me talking so okay. much. Um, so good. Kate has two minutes. And um, I have my phone here. And I'm going to set the timer. And then you can time me. And then we'll time all of you. And we'll have a specific prompt for your introduction. So I'm Kate Johnston. I'm uh, since May, I've been working with Washington Bikes. We're a statewide bicycle, pedestrian, safety, and advocacy organization. And my role with Spokane Public Schools is more focused on safe routes to schools and you know, encouraging families and schools to really create systems for ongoing promotions of walking and biking to school and just the human-powered transportation, however it, it happens. Um, and my office is located in, with the Empire Health Foundation, which also um, works on making you know, efforts to decrease obesity in Eastern Washington. Um, yeah, and so with Mariah, we're working in seven target schools. We're, we're grant funded for about three-ish years. <laughs> and we're working in seven target schools. Those schools are Seth Woodard, Holmes, Stevens, Bemis, Logan, Sunset Elementary in Airway Heights, and Moran Prairie Elementary. So I have business cards, a few out on the table. If you'd like more, let me know. Okay. Great. You can time me. So my name is Mariah McKay, and I am a lifelong Spokaneite and active transportation enthusiast. Um, I grew up on the north side. I went through the Meade School District, and my mom is a school teacher. She taught fifth grade uh, for over 40 years, actually, both at St. George's and Evergreen Elementary. Um, so I have a little perspective on what happens in the school system and, and all the pressures that teacher are under, teachers are under. And she was also a single parent. So I have a little window insight into that as well, that, you know, all the things parents face as they're trying to get their kids to school and back on a daily basis in addition to their jobs and all the other obligations and responsibilities they have. Um, so I've been working at the health district, uh, like Kate was hired on for this um, grant that is offered through the Washington State Department of Transportation. And it's overall, the big umbrella is safe routes to schools. And in, within that, we have um, a, a social marketing campaign designed to educate and encourage increasing the numbers of kids walking and biking safely to school. Uh, so I'm in the process of developing that campaign plan now. 
um, and it involves doing a lot of community assessment. So we kicked things off last at the end of last school year, right when I came on board with a parent survey. Some of you may have taken or distributed that survey. And we learned a lot about parents' top safety concerns for why they might not be walking or biking their children to school. Um, then we followed that up this summer with some parent interviews. And um, actually, none of you here are, were recruited through that particular process. But we have found volunteers by interviewing them, learning a lot more about the psychology of what, what their fears are, what their challenges are. And all of that's going to um, create more tools and resources for you to make promoting this option um, the easy choice for parents in your school. And that's my two minutes. And um, so that's a good place to start handing it over to you. Um, each of you are going to have about a minute to share your name. Um, the school or organization you're affiliated with, and why you are so generously donating your Wednesday evening to the uh, enterprise of creating a fun walk to school day event in your community. So we'll start with John over here on the my left, your right, and we'll work our way over towards Jennifer. So and if you could stand up, please. Stand up. Yep, and Kate. So I'll, I'll start the timer. Yep two faces of the same mission, uh, reinforcing. And so um, one thing I didn't mention is there's the, so there's the social marketing campaign for Safe Routes, which includes the walking school bus. And Kate is the queen of the walking school bus, <laughs> the queen bee. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the social marketing efforts, longer term, over the next three years, I'll be working to develop a, a countywide advisory council that is going to look at how we can sustain these efforts after this grant is done. Uh, and we'll also look at policy recommendations we can make to improve the conditions for children walking and biking to school across the county. So. We're so good on time. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> pretty close to on schedule. Uh, I think I can catch us up a little bit in the next five minutes um, by giving a very brief background. And I won't go into too many details um, but if you have something to add in here based on your observation, feel free to do that. We'll keep it short, but I would like to hear from you a little bit. Um, if you could take out the National Safe Routes Partnership um, background and statistics page. So <clears throat> sometimes, you know, people, skeptics, they say, well, who's your source for that? Well, this is a great little summary of the best research that's gone into the why of, and why this matters. So there's more where this came from. This is not exhaustive. Um, if you need any kind of material to uh, show the link between um, physical activity and academic achievement, for example, or walking to school and reducing behavior problems in the classroom, I'm your person. I've got a laundry list of that. Uh, so for some highlights, um, the, the numero uno statistic that is driving this, this nationwide push is the fact that you know, back in the 60s, you know, over 50% of children walked and biked to school. That's just what we did. That's how parents got to school. You know, the perennial stories of walking five miles in the snow two ways um, uphill. Uh, but now, you know, less than 15% of our kids are regularly walking and biking. That's, a, that's an incredibly dramatic shift. Um, and I think we all probably can think of some of the drivers and some of the reasons for that. Um, <clears throat> And that's having consequences. Kids are less active, um, they're less independent, and they're less healthy as a result. The, you know, the childhood obesity is catching up to us in a serious way, and that has health consequences throughout life. Um, and so a lot of people ask me, um, well, we want a crosswalk here, and we need a sidewalk there. Um, this particular grant is focused on the education encouragement, not infrastructure. Um, I can gather people's infrastructure feedback, and I'll definitely um, deliver it to city engineers. Uh, but we actually chose your schools based on the fact that you already had fairly good infrastructure in place. So the urban schools already have quite a lot of sidewalks. Um, the rural school, Moran Prairie, that we're working in, has a great Benbur Trail. So just I want to mention that point. Um, and you can see in this that that fourth paragraph down, the broad collaborations that we're going to be building throughout Spokane over the next, um, uh, the next three years. We've got educators here in the room, got lots of parents. We're, we're missing students tonight. 
Um, we don't have any elected officials yet, but many of them are very, very interested in this work. Um, both Kate and I are in cahoots with city engineers and planners. Um, business community leaders are, will be a great group of people to draw into your walk to school day events where it makes sense, where you have relationships. And um, I'm the health official and Kate's the, the bike and ped advocate. So that we pretty much got it covered, don't we? Um, so raise your hand if your school drop off zone is like a miniature traffic jam in the mornings. Yep. It's not a problem at homes. No, no traffic congestion here at all. Okay, I want to see those hands. Okay, well, how about your school when you were in working? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, think, I don't think anyone escapes the reality of the um, traffic at the point of drop off. And um, Safe Rest of School is a great way to alleviate that. It um, reduces collisions because there's fewer blind spots where then, when there's fewer cars trying to all get to the same point. There's, you know, the um, emissions from idling is significantly improved. Uh, there's just a lot of benefits to cutting down that traffic. And it actually reduces congestion throughout the city as well. So there's a lot of benefits I won't go into. Um, and so how many of you know that children are supposed to get 60 minutes of vigorous physical activity every day? Okay, people are pretty aware of that. You'd be surprised how many parents I talk to say, well, I never thought of that before. I believe it, but no, I didn't really know that was the case. Or they think that waiting at the bus stop is physical activity. So we, um, we gotta kinda work on that perception of, and understanding of what, what physical activity actually counts towards that, that 60 minute goal. Right, so um, I, I'll leave the rest for you to peruse at your leisure so we can catch up. Um, Kate, you wanna do your next piece? Yeah. Great. Uh, so, I'm just going to mention a few points about Walk to School Day and how it began, and then um, how it also is, is a great way to kind of segue into the, the daily ongoing program of the walking school bus. Um, and then there's bike trains that are part of that also. Um, and, and when I say walking school bus, it'll, I mean, that goes right along with bike trains, so, so just kind of think of those together. Um, so the Walk to School Day originally began in 1997. I was in seventh grade then. Um, anyway, uh, and I had never heard about it. I know I went to Gary Middle School and there was no walk to school day there. So it didn't happen in Spokane in 1997, but it was organized by a partnership for a walkable America. That's the organization name. And, and it began as many movements do as a one day event to promote kind of the, the bigger idea, just to gain awareness, you know, promote awareness about the issue and why it's better to walk to school and, and to bike to school. And um, it just kind of built an awareness for the need for walkable communities. Um, it improves our health, it improves the safety. Fewer students are hit by cars if there are fewer cars dropping students off at schools. Um, home values increase when communities are more walkable. Um, you'll probably notice that if, if you look at real estate at all. Um, and so, um, there, as we, uh, you know, in 1997, it kind of became this goal to have this um, walk to school day, and it eventually um, became an, a reality as a nationwide event in 2012. So that's not, not too long ago. Um, but, uh, and, and let's see. Actually, sorry, that's, that's when uh, biking to school came, became officially nationally recognized. And all this information comes from walkbiketoschool.org. And um, the event was established as international. And I love to say this when I'm talking to families and, and children. They're, they're like, whoa, International Walk to School Day is here? Like, it's happening right here in my school? Like, yes, it is. Um, and it was officially established as international in the year 2000. So it's very new, you know, just these conversations and these celebrations are a very new thing. Um, I'm just gonna read this stat here. In August 2005, federal legislation established a national safe routes to school program that provided $612 million towards safe routes to school um, from 2005 to 2010, so for 10 years. And in July of 2012, uh, transportation legislation, MAP 21, was enacted that no longer provided 
the dedicated funding for Safe Routes to School, but it instead places Safe Routes to School under a program called the Transportation Alternative Program, or TAP. Um, however, many states have continued to dedicate funding towards Safe Routes to School. So programs like this, they really don't happen without support from you know, our, our legislative support and voters making sure that it's a priority. Um, and I'll just read a couple more here. More than half of the walk to school events are part of ongoing activities to promote walking and bicycling throughout the year, which is where the walking school bus and the bicycle train programs come in. And we'll have some more information about that at the end. Um, and more than 14,800 schools in all 50 states, including the District of, of Columbia, have been awarded for federal funds for the Safe Routes to School activities. So it's, it's definitely a national movement and it's very exciting to have it um, you know, as something we can support here. Um, the first ever National Bike to School Day took place on May 9th of this year. Does anyone want to guess? <laughs> Based on what I've told you, if you could remember all, any of the numbers. <coughs> 2012, actually. So um, I'll, I'll leave you with that, and we can move on. Great. Okay. Um, so a little transition to the next exercise. Uh, thanks for that, that history and scope. Mm -hmm. um, many of you have actually done walk to school days. Um, can we maybe do a, just a quick popcorn of which school you did this at, and how big was your event? Just very quickly, and then we'll get into the assessment. Anybody know? Blank looks. And you've done walk to school day here? You're, you're new to Holmes, but Holmes has done walk to school day before. Oh, okay. Yes. OK. Our other, Kurt's not here tonight. Otherwise, he could brief us. Do you want to share what has happened oh. here at Holmes in the past, just as an uh, example to? Yeah, and yeah, that's right. Uh, I was going to mention the schools locally that have been involved. I know it has happened at Holmes in the past. And the one thing that's more fresh in my mind is the big giant event that took place at Cooper Elementary School last year, um, where the FedEx truck came and um, and they actually brought the big truck in. It's like a not 18 wheels, but you know, big giant truck. <laughs> and the students were able to sit inside the truck and and look down. And this will be happening at Holmes this year. Students can actually sit inside the truck that's parked at the school and and look down below and see that when someone gets close to the truck, they all of a sudden can't see them anymore. And so it really just brings home that idea that, you know, children can, it helps them realize that they are not easy to see to people in trucks. Um, so, um, and that happened at, at Cooper Elementary School last year. They also had the local four mascots from our local sports teams, the baseball, hockey, um, soccer and football were there as well, as well as Scopes Volunteers. It's our local community policing uh, volunteer agency. And, um, and we're planning on making that happen at, at Holmes. Those, those community supports will, are planning to be here at Holmes um, this year on Walk to School Day on October 8th. So um, the walking school bus, I'll note, that the one successful walking school bus I've heard people kind of bragging about in Spokane happened at Pratt Elementary. And I've heard just the best stories about that great walking school bus program at Pratt. And unfortunately, Pratt Elementary closed down. So, um, and they had the bike train was there as well. And anyway. Um, did you mention what a walking school bus is versus walk to school day? Oh. No, I don't. Did, some people don't know what a walking school bus is. So let's yeah. give them the two second summary. This uh, we recently had a, a national trainer come in from PedNet. It's a, an organization based out of Missouri. Um, and he came into Spokane and taught us all about the walking school bus, which is, is something that pass most this of one our around. students, most of our families, if, you're, if your students have ever walked to school, <coughs> if you've walked to school, you've kind of been involved in an unorganized walking school bus. It's um, where you know, the closer you get to school, the more people are walking in a group. It's just kind of how it goes. And so, so the walking school bus, this is a great visual, I think, on this training packet. It actually has, you know, just to pretend it could be a cardboard bus that students just walk together with, you know, that bus. And so the program is designed to just make it really organized and reliable for parents and to get, um, you know, in interested and involved community members to be predictable for each other so they can rely on each other. And, um, 
and the volunteers that lead the, the bus drivers, you could call them, um, the vo they lead the students and pick them up at the homes. Um, they all have background checks. They're you know people that parents feel comfortable with, and and parents are actually registered in the program, and the school district supports it. It's part of you know it's covered by the school district's insurance policy, and um, so it's just a very organized way to m ensure the safety and predictability of something that already happens informally. Um, informally, yeah. And it, so it's exactly what Lori was saying. It's like a walk to school day every day of the school year is what a walking school bus essentially is. Yeah. Weather permitting. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and Lori, so would you like to share a little bit about Seth Woodward's experience doing this event since it's been very successful there in the past and then we can move on to the assessment? Excellent. And um, with that, thank you very much, Lori. Um, I think it's time to move on so we don't get much further behind. And if you could pull out the next uh, sheet in your packet, it's the Right Sizing Your Walk to School Day event. And um, this is intended for um, the many of you who haven't attempted this before to kind of figure out, it's like a measuring stick. You know, how, how many resources do you have in your favor currently? And what does that mean in terms of kind of the size? You know, a lot of people get really excited, um, but then you have to remember where we're at in the calendar year and how many weeks you have until the big day. So this is meant to ensure that your first time event is successful and that you don't bite too much off so, so much you can't chew it, or, um, but also to maximize what your school community can produce for students that day. Does that sound good? So if you could just, if everyone has a writing utensil, this is just a quick yes or no. Um, you don't have to overthink these. Uh, if you have a question, uh, raise your hand and Kate or I will come by and um, help answer it. So um, let's just take a few minutes to make this happen. You can total up your number of yeses and then we'll go around and do a quick check-in and see where people landed. Was this kind of helpful? Did this get your gears turning at all? Are there any other factors that might help people figure out where they stand that aren't on this list? Not sure? You think it was helpful? So you guys know you're in a good way. And then the rest of you, you it should help fill you, uh, free you from feeling like you have to do it all in the first year. Great. So it's kind of like a checklist yeah. in a sense, yeah. Yeah, just kind of a barometer to see where you're at. Natalie? Do we have to do this next year too? Like, yeah. Can this be our test drive and then if we embarrass ourselves, we can still try next year? <laughs> yes. No such thing as embarrassing yourself. We can always <coughs> modify and adjust. Yes, and that is um, actually kind of leading into the, the next worksheet if you want to get that out. Um, it's more of a summary page um, to the point of so small, medium, and large scale events. Uh, for medium scale events, you know, s small scale, it's just this year, you're only focused on this year, uh, but if you are gonna stretch beyond, you know, you might plan your event with the following year in mind so that it builds consecutively. So it's like stair steps, you know, first year it's small, second year it might be medium, third year it might be a large scale event. So you don't do it all at once, it's a, sort of a gradual rollout, a gradual ramping up as you get more administrators you know, on board, more, you know, the parent-teacher group knows they've done it before and they're excited to do it again, that kind of thing. Um, so I don't feel the need to read these to you, um, but I do want to give you a moment to look them over. So if you could take the time to review. Um, if you are a large-scale event, um, your event will include the components of a small and medium. If you're a medium scale event, yours will include the components of a small scale event. If you're a small event, all you're looking at is the small scale section. Does that make sense? So these are meant to be additive. Just like I was saying, the menu, you know, you, everyone at least orders an entree. Uh, you may or may not get an appetizer, and you may or may not order drinks and dessert. Does that make sense? Okay. So take a second to read over your um, the characteristics of your size of event. Okay, so um, moving on, we're going to review very briefly. We have three, uh, the next three packets in our training materials 
are meant to correspond roughly to the small, medium, and large scale events. So for small scale events, this is going to be your Bible. The how to plan a walk to school day in seven days. So if you can, everyone can look at that, uh, flip to page two. This is the meat and potatoes of our event entree. So, and it gives you not only what tasks you need to do, but what order you need to complete them in. So this is the quick and dirty. Um, and if you, since we have two weeks, um, you might be able to add a little bit more uh, detail or a little bit more volume into each of these uh, activities as you plan your event. <coughs> then, and you guys are taking these home, so I'm gonna let you read them um, a little bit later, and you can refer to them when we break out into our 30 minute kind of workshopping session, okay? Um, the next handout is Walk to School Day, a Getting Started Guide. This gives you um, a little bit more, this is the medium scale, kind of examples of medium scale events. Um, and the characteristics of those are they've, you know, they've picked a special event theme, that, you know, sort of angle for their school that they're working on. Um, they have um, a specific, a defined way that students are participating. You know, maybe they all meet here and then they do a parade into the school, or it's instead of just a free-for-all, everyone walking whichever way they're usually gonna walk, um, there's some more, another layer of organization to how kids are participating. Um, and it might, you know, include some incentives. So there's examples of prizes or um, a snack buffet, a healthy snack buffet when kids arrive at the school, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> and then last but not least is the laundry list of all kinds of bells and whistles uh, that you might throw on top of the small and medium scale event ideas to create a large event extravaganza. Um, and some of these are actually things that Holmes are considering doing this year, just as an example, like the pep rally. You know, um, Holmes, I know you guys plan to reach out to local high school bands and get some live music on site to really get up the energy level. Yeah, really make kids feel like it's a triumphant achievement that they participated in the walk to school critical mass that day. And we also have a, a local hobby bike mechanic who has volunteered to, to you know, set up early in the morning. It's just a very brief event. The event's only about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, but he's going to bring his bike materials here and, and have a little bike tune-up um, session at the event here at Holmes. And, and we have other volunteer bike mechanics um, who I have contact with. If other schools are interested, you can let me know. Uh, so Kate and I are dedicated to serving as uh, resources to you to help, you know, if you see some ideas on here, that you think would be a good fit for your school, but you're not sure who to talk to about them. Kate and I know a lot of people. That's why we got hired in this role, right, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so we will help connect you. Um, sound good? Are people seeing anything on these uh, pages that is new or exciting to them? Susan? Well, yeah, I mean, like everything's new, but I was just involved with um, Spokefest uh -huh. in the children's area. And they actually, I don't know if they've researched them or whatever, but they have a whole, they had about six or seven stations that kids could be active in. And it's, I don't know if you, you know, your schools know that that might be another resource. Mm -hmm. They could access those materials. What do you think? Absolutely. Um, do you I have that on here already? You know, I, I, mean, I don't know that it's on there. Those stations figured out. Partnering with Spokefest and would be a great way to add capacity to your event. Bikes. You know, yeah. That guy, mm -hmm. that guy is probably the busiest of and I don't think Kate mentioned it earlier, but um, in some of these materials, you'll see this referred to as walk and roll to school day instead of just exclusively walk to school day. And it's generally considered that if a student bikes to school that day, they get counted as walking to school. They participated even though it was on wheels instead of by foot. So this walk to school day is meant to be very inclusive of bikes. And in addition, in the spring, in May, we have a dedicated bike to school day. Yes. Which um, you know, all May of the six. logistical six. May 6th. Yep. So you can write that in your notes, mark your calendars. <laughs> um, we haven't decided if we're going to repeat this training for Bike to School Day or not. So we're going to hear from you if you think there's a need for that. 
Um, and of course, there's some schools that weren't able to be here tonight. I know Moran Prairie particularly has a, a big interest in bikes. Um, so all of the materials here for the logistics apply to bike, to bike day, uh, but there's some additional factors on safety concerns on top for unique to bikes that we would want to cover as part there, of an event organizing workshop. I can, I can say there will definitely be a training prior to bike to work day, and I, I would love to have you help me with that as we plan forward. Um, I know that some schools are just kind of getting their feet wet with this and, and just getting introduced to it and they might not be ready to roll out a, a, an event until the spring for bike to school day, which we very much promote walking on that day also. It's very much um, just active transportation day. Um, so bike to school day is May 6th and the week prior to that is um, another it's something that the, the gal who has helped with Spokefest, the children's activities at Spokefest that you mentioned, yeah. um, it's uh, Katie Ferris. She is a West Valley School District teacher, and she is amazing. She has organized that the week before Bike to School Day, she's organized some bike maintenance days at her school. And, um, and Sacred Heart Children's Hospital has been there to volunteer also. And, um, valley scopes and everything so and I would think that based on the awesome participation in tonight's workshop it seems like there's a demand people are interested in sitting through a two-hour workshop to learn how to do this so I think we're probably we probably will offer more of them yeah. all right maybe so we could get it down to one hour I think it's time to it. break out um, and one last question it's it is the kickoff to a larger social marketing campaign that's going to educate and encourage walking and biking throughout the year. Good. Yep. So it's kind of like the entree to Kate's walking school bus, which is um, Holmes is going to be the first to implement the walking school bus, and that's partly why they're further along in the walk to school day planning process. Uh, it's because they've been getting extra support um, to get ahead of the curve um, to be prepared for the walking school bus. So um, it should be said that our goal is to implement the walking school bus in two to three schools per year over the next three years for a total of seven schools. Does and that we, make sense? We're aiming to have uh, Logan and Bemis geared up. At this point, it's looking like we're, we'll have maybe a more braggable event in the spring, I would think, at both of those, if not you know, um, for a walk to school day in the fall. So um, those are two things. So yeah, it's a larger social marketing campaign with kind of two big flagship events each year, you know, to, to kind of those awareness creating events, um, walk to school day in October, and then bike to school day in May. October, the month of October is walk to school month, so that's another great thing to highlight. The month of May is bike to school month, so um, th it'll have those punctuating events, and then the month, if you could stretch it out for just the month, great, and then ideally we, you know, get people walking and biking every day of the year. All right, so I want to preserve your time to workshop. So we're going to break. And um, if we could have the Holmes people center around one table, if you could clear off your table, I'm going to give you each um, a little flip chart page to record some of your event ideas on. Um, we've got you two paired up together. Susan's going to go with, Lo with Logan and Bemis. OK. Um, well, Bemis is over here. Maybe, um, Logan is. Maybe you're Logan. Logan. Yeah, maybe Logan. Okay. If you want to, uh, yeah. Natalie, if you want to move over to this table also, and and then Lori and Joel can stay together. Um, and John, you want to help out with Logan since you you've got district expertise. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, awesome. That went really well. Thank you for your flexibility and throwing it down. I know it's just a draft, but I think I my hope is that th these ideas will help you um, streamline and. Um, you, you can call Kate and I and we'll be checking in on you and continuing to support as we get closer to the big day. So um, the next section is uh, last additional resources and Q&A. Uh, then we're going to wrap this up and send you on your way on time. Um, so one thing um, that's not on the agenda that I want to mention is that um, in your small, medium, and large <coughs> sort of event, uh, resources. Anything, these came off of the stickmanknows.org website and anything you see that has an underline is actually a link to an additional resource. So that's an incentive for you to go to stickmanknows.org and look at these tools electronically so that you can um, go beyond into the hyperlink. So for example, 
Um, I heard over here that you guys are considering a table for coffee for parents to thank the parents. There's a whole page on the Stickman Knows website about things to think about, about where you place that coffee table so the kids don't feel left out, and you know, that kind of thing. So check it out, right? Great. Um, also, one other thing that's not on the agenda is um, there, well, I'll briefly explain kind of the plan for the walking school bus also and in, in the projected schedule for that this fall and then how we'll do it again in, in the spring. So if you want more information on that, you can talk to me afterward. Yes, good. And so, Sophia's got some great <clears throat> sample letters for that too. So, um, Part of, so the, the next thing I want you to pull out in your packet is the Feet First IWALK Challenge Submission Form. Um, so it was my intention to have a laptop station set up for you to register your event with uh, our partners at Feet First. It's a statewide pedestrian advocacy group. Um, they are based in Seattle, and their goal is to get 100 schools in Washington State to register their events for Walk to School Day this year. Um, right now, they have about two-thirds of that goal reached of schools already signed up. But guess how many schools from Eastern Washington are signed up? Zero. A big, fat zero. And I know all of you know that we have a lot more enthusiasm and momentum here in Eastern Washington than zero. And we want to stand up and be counted and be represented. And so I'm um, going to ask all of you, whether you're small, medium, or large, to register your event on the Feet First I Walk Challenge. And there's great incentives for doing this. Um, the, they are going to be handing out prizes to schools who put on um, particularly interesting events or who overcome um, challenges like some of the concerns you guys have been mentioning who overcome those concerns um, and maybe are a first time event um, that does really well. And I think that they want to encourage us out here um, to get more involved in this. Um, so the prizes are waiting for you if you register your event. And so all that means is it's a quick five minutes, date, time, name of event, who, who, what your name is, and um, then at the end, after all the festivities are through, you'll go back and you'll write them a little report of what, how it went, you know, what you accomplished. And it's just you know, two paragraphs. So it's not too overwhelming. And this is an example of a report written by a Spokane school who participated in the IWALK Challenge in 2012. So if you have any questions about how to fill this out, um, you can contact Kate or I, and I'll be following up to make sure that you guys do get signed up. Um, <clears throat> and on the small scale event summary, there is the link. And it's feetfirst.org slash feetfirst I walk challenge is where you sign up. Does that and, sound good? And I want to just um, give another plug for Feet First. They're not just a Seattle based organization who's just hoping to get some data out of Spokane. They're really um, engaged in, actually I attended a Traffic Skills 101 course for Deer Park teachers and Riverside School District teachers um, this last spring. And Jen from Feet First, that's the email address that you submit the application to, Jen um, came all the way out to Deer Park to help host that training and then she'll also be coming um, this coming week for uh, Colville and Kettle Falls trainings for traffic safety for teachers up there. So and they're very invested. Jen provided us with these awesome uh, prize packs um, that you're all going to get for graduating from tonight's workshop. <laughs> uh, and Kate and I have stuffed them full of goodies and resources. And Joel. And prizes. <laughs> and Joel. I just grabbed work. Yep. Um, <laughs> to help spur you on your walking and bicycling way. So um, <clears throat> the next thing I want us to turn our attention to is the media plan. Um, oh, question, Seth? Now, do you want each of us to register our event, or is it just one registration? One registration per school. So perhaps your event coordinator makes sure that this happens, whether they register the event or they delegate it to an a event committee member to sign up. Yes. I need permission from the like principal or head safety person at the school. Or yes, you should. 
you should notify them that you are registering your school. Just notify them like, hey, I'm going to do this. Pretty much. Um, yep, because this is this is something, you know, the event festivities are, it's encouraging parents on their way to school. So you can do that. They don't have to necessarily be involved, but you want to gain their involvement. And they'll be impressed that you're donating your time, and so they'll be appreciative, likely. Um. <laughs> and, and at Logan, um, Trisha, the principal's <coughs> assistant, and Brent, they've both supported this program. So if you just want to do it and then notify Trisha, and she'll, she's kind of the liaison. She's letting yeah, Brent she'll know. be thrilled to hear that you're on board, because she's, I don't think she's aware of you yet. So, yeah, this yeah. is good news. Yes. We're creating synergy. And then also, of course, let, um, let Kay and Chana know. Yes. All right. Well. So um, we've already started a communication plan to promote all of your events together simultaneously. Um, this press release was sent out on Monday of this week, and it's a great example of some of the talking points that we're going to be using to explain to the media why we are organizing um, this effort for our school children in Spokane County. And this um, is going to be similar to a second release that we are going to send out closer to October 8th. And um, you'll notice in here that Holmes Elementary School is mentioned. And uh, our public information officer is going to be the point on the media plan for the communications for the day of the event. And her contact information is up here. Her name's um, Kim Papich. And she has played this role for Walk to School Day in the past. Um, and if you get, you know, if you have ideas to reach out to media, I know some of you do. Um, you might let Kim know that you're going to contact your media friends um, so she can kind of help make sure everything's flowing smoothly over the course of the day. And Kate and I will have a plan to be a you know, strategic place and time. Um, there will be more cameras and um, hopefully we can be those standard bearers that get other schools excited about doing this in the future. Right? So they're going to see great footage of your events and they're going to be like, wow, why isn't my school doing this walk to school day thing? And then next year we'll have to have a bigger training room to squeeze everyone in, get them on board. Any questions about the media plan? I'll just, I'm gonna do another plug for Kim. Um, she's great and very experienced, much more so than I with uh, media presentation and, and um, just in a brief conversation <coughs> with her, she gave me some tips that I hadn't thought of. So um, definitely contact her if you have any questions. Great. So, last chance for Q&A before we close out this evening's workshop. You guys seem like you're pretty confident. More so than what I got here. Yeah? yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Awesome. Yeah. So, hopefully we're not overwhelming you with resources, but I hope it's encouraging to see that this has been done before. You've got a lot of support and it's, you know, we hope you'll have fun with it like Kurt was saying. Excellent. So, okay. What we're gonna do <clears throat> is you're gonna stand up and again your name, because we're still in the process of remembering each other's names, and um, share one thing that you learned tonight and one thing that you're excited for about your upcoming event. I think you can remember those three things, and then when you do that, I will hand you a tote bag. Sound good? All right, so um, maybe we can start with John. Thank you, Susan. Great, well, that wraps us up for tonight. If we could actually um, all get together here at the front of the room and Nachi will take one last group photo.